Okay, so we've done roots, we've done stems, we're moving on to leaves, and as you can see, leaves take uh, many different functions and shapes, and we'll go over those different types. So, first thing first, um, leaves are very important, of course, for our human um, use. We use them for shade, we use them for many materials, so for example, hemp is used for a lot of different things. It can be used to make plastics that are biodegradable, it can... Um, be used to make ropes, um, has medicinal pur pur purposes and also um, illicit drug use purposes. So um, uh, we also have other plants which are, which are used for seasonings and foods and soaps and colognes, medicines and so many different things that we reply, uh, rely on these plants for which is made out of their leaves. Um, now the leaves are of course the main site of photosynthesis, so photosynthesis. sometimes um, plants also have green stems which also photosynthesize but the leaves are generally where most of the photosynthesis occurs and it arises from primordia which are in the leaf bud. Um, it is also the site where evaporation occurs which fuels the process of e transpiration so the energy required to move fluid through the um, stems, through the roots into the stems and then to the leaves um, occurs because of evaporation at the leaves. Uh, sometimes there is pressure which is exerted even when evaporation stops, um, exerted by the roots and that will cause some fluid to escape the leaves or build up on the leaves and that's called utation. Uh, deciduous trees lose their leaves after the growing season or sometimes after the you know when it gets cold if it's in a temperate place or in the dry season if it's in a you know tropical wet dry place evergreen trees also replace their leaves but it's not all at once it's not all in one season their leaves typically last from two to seven years and their all of their leaves are in varying stages of growth or maturity or being shed <clears throat> so the different parts of the leaf, you have the petiole, which is like the stalk of the leaf, and some of them do not have a petiole at all. So this here is a sessile leaf; it does not have a petiole. Um, you have the the blade or the flattened part of the leaf, um, and then the margin or the outside edge. And you could have serrated margins. You can have lobed margins. Um, these are all used to characterize different plants. The underside of the leaf has tiny pores called stomata, and that's for gas exchange and guard cells, which regulate uh, the opening and closing of the stomata and also allow for water to escape during evaporation. You can then look at the types of leaves. You have a simple leaf. A simple leaf just has you know, one leaf on one petiole. Um, you can also have a compound leaf. So all this is one leaf, but it has many leaflets. Um, and in a leaflet, you have an extension of the petiole, which is called the rachis. <clears throat> and you can have a pinnately compound leaf, where the leaflets are in pairs, as you can see here. Or you can have a palmately compound leaf, where everything comes out, uh, all the leaflets come out at one point. Um, throughout leaves you also have veins and, and, and uh, veins are the extensions of the xylem and phloem which are in the um, in the stems. Uh, they can be arranged differently so parallel veins are indicative of monocots and then branched veins are uh, indicative of dicots. Uh, pinnate veins are, are where you have one primary vein called the mid vein and it has an enlarged midrib and then secondary veins branch from that mid vein. Um, palmate veins fan out from the, the base of the blade all from the same place. So leaves can have different arrangements and we talked about how this can help define what type of stem you have. Um, but uh, leaves generally have a high surface area so that they can be exposed to the sunlight. Um, and the sun will radiate throughout the leaf, not only at the surface, but into the other parts of the leaf where chlorophyll is abundant. And so these leaves are generally at right angles towards the stem or very close to. Um, 
and they grow from these nodes and then the internodes are the parts of the stem where you do not have growth of leaves. Most species attach in this alternate pattern where you have a leaf on one side of the stem and then it, further up you have a leaf on the other side of the stem. Some of them are opposite where you have two leaves coming out of the same point at the stem, the same node. And then you have a world where you have uh, three or more leaves all coming from the same uh, node. When you look at the microstructure then of leaves, you have an outer single layer of epidermal cells and it is usually covered in a wax made of cutin which forms the cuticle um, and there may also be glands which occur within the epidermis which can secrete you know various different types of uh, substances which may you know um, decrease the ability of predators to eat them or uh, maybe be poisonous um, and again like I mentioned before the stomata and guard hairs are the holes and the um, guard cells, excuse me, are the cells surrounding the stomata which allow them to open and close. Now within the leaf then under the uh, epidermis you have the mesophyll and this is where most, most photosynthesis takes place. Okay, The uppermost part of the mesophyll is stacked with um, parenchyma and they have lots of chloroplasts. Um, that's called the palisade mesophyll and then the spongy me mesophyll is the area that has um, more air spaces and parenchyma cells as well. Veins then will, um, or vascular bundles where the xylem and phloem are, are surrounded by parenchyma cells called bundle sheaths. So there's a vein there and a vein there. All right, so here's a cross section again showing the different layers. You have the epidermis, which forms the waxy layer of the cuticle. You have the palisade mesophyll cells, where you have lots of these um, cells bunched together for uh, photosynthesis. You have the second layer, um, the spongy mesophyll cells, where there's lots of air. Here's a vascular um, bundle where a vein is going through the leaf. Here's another vein here. Oh, and then here's a stoma, which is singular for stomata, and then the guard cells, which will open and close the stoma. All right, there are lots of different specialized leaves, so not all of them are just for photosynthesis. Some of them uh, are shade leaves where they are larger, thinner, they have less photosynthetic elements. Usually they are shaded by the upper ones. Um, there are leaves of arid regions, which are thick and leathery. leathery. Um, they have fewer stomata, so their purpose is to prevent fluid loss. Aquatic regions usually have less xylem and phloem and with a lot more air spaces. Tendrils, you can see here are tendrils. Um, when they, these are modified leaves and when they uh, make contact with something, they will rapidly start growing on one side but not the other which will cause this spiraling effect where they can anchor into things. Um, there are also spine, thorns, and prickles which spines are modified leaves. Thorns are modified stems, and prickles are modifi modifications of the epidermis. Roses have uh, prickles on them because they are epidermal um, scutes. Um, there are some that are for storage, including uh, succulent leaves of uh, cacti found in the deserts, or sugar, which are found in onion and lilies. You can have reproductive leaves where they have, uh, this is a, a plant that has basically creates these leaves that have roots and everything you need to start a new plant so those little um, uh, projections will fall off and plant into the soil and so that but there there's no seeds or anything going on there you have floral leaves which are called bracts these are usually colored and they look like floral uh, floral petals but they are not they are actually leaves you also have some leaves which are for uh, trapping insects and those insects can then be used to absorb nitrogen um, and these are highly modified some of them uh, can be sticky this one has kind of a trap door to it other ones have like a pitcher or there are some that are are called bladder warts where they actually have a kind of pump that traps the insects as well all right in autumn what happens uh, in in temperate a forest is the deciduous trees will will change their color especially those of 
oaks and birch and aspen and things like that. Um, eventually they will become kind of this brown color because of a reaction between tannins and the components of the cells within the leaf that are breaking down and that's similar to how leather is made. Um, there are lots of pigments found in the leaves. Chlorophylls, carotenoids, and xanthophylls are all important for capturing different wavelengths of sunlight and they will have different colors. Um, and so when a, a, a leaf starts to die, those chlorophylls may bleach out first and then you're left with the yellows. Um, but you can also have different pigments which arise because of the breakdown and accumulation of other pigments. So anthocyanin is red or blue or purple or somewhere in between depending on the reaction with the different cellular components. Beta cyanins are red. Any of these combinations can make very uh, different colors even within the same tree. Um, some trees, however, are all uniform in color like birch trees which are all yellow. Um, and then maple trees have a variety of different colors from leaf to leaf. But uh, generally, you know, stay within the shades of red, orange, and yellow. Abscission then is the actual uh, dropping of the leaf after it has really lost all its pigment normally. And this um, is triggered by changes in temperature and day length or by wet and dry seasons if it's in a tropical area. The abscission zone, then the area where this is going to break off, is at the petiole in each leaf. And there is a uh, leaf portion at the petiole and then there's the stem portion. So hormones are produced to suppress abscission during the growing season and then when the growing season stops those hormones are reduced. Um, and what happens is the protective layer on the stem becomes coated with suberin, a fatty um, substance, and then the separation layer on the leaf swells and becomes gelatinous. And so you have then these two areas where once connected are now producing lipids and separating. The pectin in the middle of the leaf then is broken down by enzymes and the xylem and phloem are the only thing that rema remains which can easily snap off when it rains or uh, is blown off by the wind. Um, what remains are tiny bundle scars where those vascular bundles uh, were um, projecting into the leaf.